Amelia here. So today's video is 10 tips for you to consider when you are looking for purchasing a horse. I just got back from traveling to Europe and Holland and we saw a ton of horses. I think we saw probably like 30 horses in three days, which is crazy and so fun and I love to go. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that trip in this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out with the algorithm. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any tips to add to this because I think we've all made mistakes with purchasing horses. So hopefully we can help each other out to avoid making mistakes. Also check out the description. I have a free rider assessment quiz which is gonna help you figure out your strengths and weaknesses as a rider. All right, so let's get started with the video. Uh, like I said, I just got back from Holland. It was so fun there. We saw so many beautiful and really nice horses. Uh, the horse market is a little crazy right now. Everyone's like buying, 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 which is great. I saw, I was mainly looking at young horses, so like four to six years old. I saw some beautiful, beautiful stallions, which is always a lot of fun. I'm not gonna buy a stallion, but it's always fun to see them. I saw some really cute babies. I saw some beautiful barns. So there was this one barn. I'll put some photos in here, but it was so beautiful, like no expense spared. The arena was magnificent. The stalls were magnificent. The footing was perfect. And the coolest thing about this barn was that in the corner of each stall, they had a little chute, like it had a cap on it and then you lift up the cap and you just put all the poo down the little chute and then there was a conveyor belt that took all the poop to the end of the barn and collected it into a bin. So that was just like so in ingenious and really cool to see. It's always really inspiring to go over there. So let me get started with the 10 tips. So my first and most important tip is that temperament is number one. This is so important and it's really important when you're looking for a horse not to get wrapped up in things that don't matter so much. So don't get so wrapped up about age or size or color or breed. Really the most important thing is the temperament. So. How willing is the horse? What's their expression like? Are their ears forward? Are their ears penned? Is their tail quiet? And then when you ride the horse, like does the horse try to understand your aids? Is the horse willing or do they just kind of want to run back to the gate and unload you? All of that stuff is really important because when you have a horse that's willing and a temperament that's good, it makes the whole training journey so much easier. So a horse with a willing temperament can overcome a lot of things. It can overcome confirmation issues and you know age and breed and all of that can be overcome when they have a good temperament. A horse that doesn't have a good temperament, that's not willing, that's tense and ears penned and you know, you get on it and it just doesn't want to adapt to your age, that's not gonna be good. So tip number one is temper. Tip number two is to really watch and study the person that normally rides the horse. I always recommend that you see someone ride the horse before you get on it because this is really important for your safety, for one, that you can see someone else ride the horse. And also that you really have a chance to study how the horse is used to being ridden. So I really focus on things like, do they have spurs and a whip? If they don't have spurs on, you should take your spurs off. Uh, I also focus on like, how do they warm the horse up? Like what is the horse's normal routine? Which canter lead do they start on? What kind of a frame is the horse in? What kind of contact does it look like they have? So that when I get on the horse, I try to emulate how that rider has been riding the horse. I think it's really important when you're trying horses to consider that it's hard for the horse too. Like it's hard for you as the rider to get on a strange horse, but it's also really hard for the horse to have a strange rider get on them. So I always try to first ride the horse how they're used to being ridden before I maybe try to make some adjustments as far as like their frame or do some more transitions or try to kind of experiment a little. But I always really study how the horse is with the rider first. and. There's been many horses over the years that I've decided not to get on. Like if the horse is being really naughty with 
its normal rider, it's best just not to get on it. If you're not gonna buy the horse, then you know what's the point in going through that and risking that you know something could happen to you or maybe you're gonna upset the horse. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is to really watch the walk. So in your test, the walk is a very expensive movement. Most always it's a coefficient and it's really hard to improve a walk. So lots of things, you know, when you go try a horse, you think, okay, I can make this better, I can make that better. If the horse doesn't have a good walk, then you're not really gonna be able to improve it. So you wanna be sure that the walk is regular, that it's not lateral, that it has good over track. I also always ask for the riders to do like an extended walk or a free walk, and then also show a little bit of a collected walk or a medium walk, depending on the age of the horse. But this definitely factors in to my decision if you're not as interested in like competing, then the walk isn't such a big deal as it is if, you're, if your goal is to buy a horse really for you to compete, then for sure the walk needs to be, you really need to pay attention to the walk. Okay, tip number four is for when you get on the horse. So it's really important when you get on the horse that one thing that I really, feel like is there's some horses that you just immediately click with and enjoy riding them and others you sit on them and you just, it doesn't work for you and that's okay. So on this last trip, there were a few horses that I saw the video and I saw the person ride the horse and I thought like, wow, it's a beautiful horse. It moves really well. It's super uphill. It looks like a nice horse. For whatever reason, when I got on the horse, it just wasn't for me. I didn't like how it felt. Um, we just didn't really click and that's okay. So it's really important to listen to that and feel that like when you purchase a horse, you're going to be spending many, many hours riding it. So you really want to feel whether or not you click with the horse. You want to feel like the horse, again, the temperament, are they willing to adjust to you and kind of listen to your aids? Another thing that I think is really important when you try a horse is to pay attention to the symmetry. So like feel the trot on a left-hand circle and then change direction to a right-hand circle and how symmetrical does that feel? Feel the left lead canter and then feel the right lead canter. And you want, every horse has a hollow side and a stiff side, but the more symmetrical they are to begin with, the easier that makes your job. Because if a horse is super crooked left and right, it could cause more lameness issues and it's also just gonna make them a little bit harder to train. So that's definitely something that you wanna pay attention to when you're riding that you can't always see so much from the ground. Tip number five, this is super important, is to always, always, always check the feet and legs. So after I ride the horse, if it's a horse that I like, I always take the bandages off, feel up and down all the tendons, check for splints, a lot of horses have splints, that's okay, but you need to take note of that. Know that they're there, make sure they don't, are, they're not hot or anything. Pick up all four feet, check their frogs, um, you know, make sure that they're not weird at all when you pick up their feet. I also like to take a photo of their feet so that I can forward that along to my veterinarian. And I want to see that, especially the front feet, that they're symmetrical. So you want them to be the same size and you also, want them to have equal height in the heel heel like some horses have a high heel and a low heel you don't really want that so you want the front feet to be symmetrical and yeah just really check those feet and legs feel their neck feel their back the more that you can just put your hands on the horse and get a sense of them that's going to help you avoid some extra expense with your vet check Tip number eight is to really pay attention to the horse's expression. So like the whole time that I'm there, I'm noticing like, how are they in the cross ties? How are they when you put the saddle on? You know, are their ears forward? Are they grumpy? Same thing when you're riding them. How is the horse when you get on? How's the horse when you get off? All of that is really important because I think it gives you a signal about, you know, just the horse's overall happiness and attitude. Tip number nine is to ask a lot of questions. And I think that this is really important. You know, you need to ask things like, has the horse ever been shown? How is the horse 
to haul and trailer. I bought a horse once that had a hauling issue and it was like a total disaster. So be sure to ask about that. Ask if the horse has had any surgeries or any lamenesses or any issues. The more information that you can gather about the horse, then the better it's going to help you to make that final decision. And then tip number 10 is that no horse is absolutely perfect <laughs> and so yes by all means do your due diligence ride the horse multiple times have a vet check check everything out be sure that it's you know really what you want but at the end of the day you know you can spend your whole life looking for a horse and at the end of the day you just have to decide like okay this is the horse that I want like you have to kind of bite the bullet and purchase the horse and for example when I bought Kensington my six-year-old there was like a little question about one of the issues with his fetlock he has just a slight abnormality on one of the x-rays and I really went back and forth like should I buy this horse should I not buy this horse and I had to say to myself you know what he's a really good horse he's young he has three good gates and I'm just gonna take the risk and buy the horse so I hope this video kind of helps you guys think through and gives you some strategies for when you're looking for your next horse. Like I said, I just got back from Holland and um, when I go over there, it's always really fun because I get to see a lot of different horses. I get to try out a lot of different horses. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like shoe shopping. You get to try everything on and see what you like and what you don't like and what suits you and what doesn't suit you. I went to the barn that I got Harvey from, so that was really cool to see his his previous rider and trainer. Her name is Cindy and she's just a lovely person and a lovely rider and I tried a horse out there so that was really cool. We went to Kensington's barn where I got Kensington and the guy there, he's super nice and super cool. He's also a shoer so he was there like building his own shoes. <laughs> And I found this really cool book by Harry Bolt. I'll put some photos in here because I took some photos while I was looking through it, but there's just some amazing photos there. It was on one of the coffee tables at one of the barns that I went to, but it's super fun to go and try horses. I love going to Europe. The scenery is beautiful. We went on a ferry. We saw the ocean and the countryside. And what's really cool about it there is that horses are so much a way of life and just a part of the community and everyone kind of rides and has some horses and trains them up and it's really just a beautiful thing to go there and see so many horses and I'm really grateful for that opportunity and we'll see whether or not I've found one I think the vet check is always one of the hard parts about purchasing a horse so fingers crossed everything goes well let me know in the comments if you have anything to add for my 10 tips like I said I think there's probably hundreds of tips and at the end of the day when you buy a horse it's always kind of a gamble like when I bought Harvey, it was a big deal and everyone was like, oh my gosh, aren't you just so excited? And I was quite nervous. It was, you know, a lot of money and you never really know until you have them here. You don't know everything about the horse, you know, even if you've gone to see it and you've had a vet check and you've ridden it multiple times, it's always a, a different thing when they arrive at your barn and suddenly you have to be training them and it's a... It's a big transition for the horse as well, you know, to ship across the world or even across the country and everything's different. They have new people, they have new stalls, they have new neighbors, a new environment. So for the horses, it's a big adjustment. For us, it's a big adjustment, but it can also be really exciting. And I think that if you find the right horse and the right temperament and the right partner for you, it can be a you know, a lifelong thing. For me personally, that's really what I look forward to every day is I love to go to the barn. I love to see my horses. I love to ride my horses. Even if it's like a holiday or a day off, that's my best gift to myself is to go to the barn and ride my horses because I have such a bond with them. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will post some more clips here.